Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Dragons of the Flame, brought to us by LTR Double and Pony Canyon. Dragons of the Flame is actually a direct sequel to the other NES game, Heroes of the Lamps. It continues and picks up the storyline right where we left off. Dragons of the Flame was developed by a separate team and actually was only released for the Famicom in Japan. A PC version of the game was released in Europe for the Spectrum ZX, but there is no North American version of the game. With how poorly Heroes of the Lance ended up turning out, it wouldn't be surprising that the sequel ended up not making it to North American shores. However, this game is a much better experience overall than Heroes of the Lance. Thankfully, we're not stuck in just one dungeon in Dragons of the Flame, they do vary it up a little bit. Just like Heroes of the Lance, Dragons of the Flame is part of the Dragon Lance campaign module, and this one is based on the second one of that. Also, it's based on the second half of the first Dragon Lance novel, known as Dragons of Autumn Twilight. In this run of the game, I'll be playing a fan translation of the game, so you'll be able to read all the cutscenes in English. Unlike Heroes of the Lands, you actually have a save system in Dragons of Flame, so you have three different save data to select from, so you can save and come back to the game later on. After escaping out of the ruins from Heroes of the Lance, we get outside to find that Verminard is directing the dragon armies to burn down villages and pretty much rape and pillage. One huge difference is that we actually have a world map to explore. There are random battles spread out throughout the map and it's actually a little bit similar to The Adventures of Link, the second Legend of Zelda game. Since we don't gain too much experience in the game, and the experience is really more of a point system, I'm going to be avoiding as many of the random battles as possible. We're going to be heading south here, just go left along the water's edge, and then start making your way down here into this desert and talk to this guy. He offers us some medicine for saving some kids, and now we're going to continue south into the forest below. This area is definitely tricky, so you'll want to be following my path in order to try to figure out your way through it, because it's very maze-like. Running into one of the random battles, we get to the actual action sequence of the game, and as you can see, very similar, but a little bit better graphically than Heroes of the Lance. Like the previous game, we have 8 characters to choose from, each of them representing a different type of class in the Dungeons & Dragons universe. So each of the characters has different health, different defense, and different overall weapon. 
For the combat of the game, I find it most useful just to stick with the warriors and then use the mage spells pretty much to heal you up whenever you do take a certain amount of damage in battle. The hit detection in Dragons of the Flame is a lot better, so you shouldn't have as much trouble attacking enemies. With these wasp enemies, try to get in close and attack a few times and then back away after a second or two, so that you don't end up getting hit by its stinger. As you can see, the stinger has a pretty long range, so it can hit you from a good distance away. Thankfully though, it doesn't do too much damage, so even if you take a few hits during these random scenes with them, you won't be in too much trouble. Almost all the enemies in the game pretty much are going to have the same attack pattern, so we'll be getting in, getting a hit or two, and then backing away just far enough to get out of the range of their attack. Continue south through the forest maze, and when you see another person standing over to the left, you'll have a short conversation with them. After the cutscene, we'll now be in a whole new area. Start off by walking over to the left. When you get into a battle with a random enemy here, they will be different than the ones we were just facing off with in the forest area. These flying enemies are pretty easy. Stop right in front of them and wait for them to swoop down towards you before you actually attack. With the wolf enemies, you can actually attack down by holding down an attack so then you can actually hit them at their level, so you don't actually have to worry about trying to hit them head on, as your sword will just go over their head. Trying to figure that out in the first Heroes of the Lance game was extremely tricky, and definitely caused a lot of deaths. As far as choosing your character that you want to use, I usually stick with just the default character at first, wait till he gets low on health and heal him up, and then at that point I can switch him up a little bit. Like I said, the characters do play differently and they all have some unique abilities, but you really want to focus on mainly just the attacking type guys and don't really use the mages to actually fight any battles. In the upper left corner through the rock maze, you'll find a small cave in the upper left corner, and that's our goal. Be very careful of these red demons because they actually can spit fire. When you see one of the fireballs coming your way, be sure to duck down. Also, be very careful that when they get low on health and you kill them, they end up exploding, and that explosion can actually do some damage to you. While coming up here is optional, finding this blacksmith can really help out because it gives you a huge boost to your armor. Some of the random battlefields will actually have areas for you to jump up and attack enemies through that way. Thankfully with these demons though, you do have a second as you can see they turn transparent before they end up exploding, so that's your signal to get the heck away from them. Our new goal is now to head south. Use the left wall as kind of a guide to make your way down through the rock maze. Our goal is actually in the direct center of the map, but at the very bottom of it as well. During this segment, I'm trying to do my absolute best to avoid as many random battles as possible. This is also due to try to conserve some of my health, 
because we're getting ready to enter one of the major dungeons of the game. Right here, I'm going to switch over and switch my characters just to change up the scenery a little bit. As you can see, switching over to Riverwind, he looks pretty much exactly the same as the character we were already using, but it is technically a different character, so I want to switch things up a little bit. So now we've entered the cave of Sly Mori. This is pretty much the main dungeon of the game and we'll be spending the rest of the game doing this. It's broken up into a couple of different parts, but it's all one giant dungeon. Just like Heroes of the Lance, our goal is to work our way through room to room trying to find the correct path and taking out all the different enemies along the way. I'll be doing my best to just showcase each and every door that I go through and show you where items are along the way if they're needed. A good item to pick up here over to the left is a throwing axe. Once you pick up that though, take out this ghost enemy by just attacking a few times and backing away like we've been doing. There will also be some debris that will fall from the ceiling from time to time, but it's a little bit tricky to dodge, so you may end up just taking a hit or two from this. Over here on the far left, you'll find a set of arrows. Once you grab them, just keep continuing over to the left and enter the next door. Just like before, I like to stand still with the flying enemies, let them come down to me, and then attack them. You may need to back up just like some of the other ones once they do come down, but they end up being pretty simple. Be careful of the fireball enemies, I usually find ducking in front of them is the best way in order to hit them a couple of times and then try to back away, so that when they do fire that fireball, it just goes over my head. I do find jumping in the game actually will make you move a little bit quicker, so on some long hallways when there's no enemies to deal with, I'll probably jump a few times just to try to make it go by a little bit quicker, or at least to look a little bit more interesting. Be careful of the griffin enemies, they are flying enemies that will come down slowly towards you. If you time your hits, you'll be able to attack them and they'll just go through you without doing any damage, in which case I usually just continue running past them and go to the next door. When you enter this room, walk over to the left and you'll find a throne. On top of the throne, along with the dead body, will be a sword. After picking up the Worm Slayer from the throne, just continue off and work over to the left and pick up this quarter staff that actually is a plus two. If you want to use one of your mages, be sure to equip this to them. As soon as you enter this next room, a griffin will try to attack you, so hold the left button to walk over to the left. And then when it sweeps down, just run past it over to the right and enter the next door.
Be very careful here. Do a long jump. Just take the damage that you're going to take from the giant enemy. But be sure that you can make it over the pit. As you can see, I've taken a lot of damage here, so I'm going to be using my Cleric here so I can heal myself a little bit before moving on. Thankfully, you have a good amount of Light Wound Cure, so you should be able to bring your health up pretty quickly. When you make it over to the right here, you'll find the entrance to Pax Thargus. Once going inside, we'll now be in the second half of this dungeon. Well, the dungeon pretty much looks the same, the only real difference right now for us is the color scheme, going from blue to gray. While the scenery has changed, the enemies are pretty much going to remain the same, so if you've gotten most of the strategy down against each type of monster, you won't have too much trouble for most of this dungeon. Walk over to the left here and you'll find yourself a Potion of Healing, as well as a Ring of Protection. Be sure though that you equip the Ring of Protection so that it can end up helping you out here. The green giant monsters are probably some of the hardest in the game because their attack motion is one of the fastest. So just be sure to attack once or twice and then immediately back away. This room has multiple ones of them, so since you're going to be taking damage from the second one by trying to jump over the pit, just be sure that you take out the first one and still have a large chunk of health left. Just like before, I've taken a good amount of damage, so before I attempt to make this next jump, I'm going to switch off and change my character once again. Take the damage from the giant and immediately enter the door right across the gap from him. Jump over the gap and walk over to the left here to pick up some more arrows if you need them. Then you can enter the door right next to it. After you make the jump over the scab, you'll end up running into a goblin. After he gets done talking to you, you'll actually have to fight him. Immediately jump so you can get over his crossbow and then get up close and attack quickly. Just unleash a few hits on him and you'll get another cutscene with him.
After the scene with the goblin, continue off to the right and you'll run into a giant dragon. After the cutscene, we not only get a new ability, but we also refill all the magic that we've used throughout the game. Just like before, I get a little bit low on health, so I'll use my Light Wound Curing in order to bring my health back up. Over here, past the store to the left, you'll get a new spell, the Raise of the Dead spell, as well as another Ring of Protection. As expected, the Raise of the Dead spell can bring one of your past friends who may have died up to this point and bring them back to life. Before entering this door, make sure your health is up because it's time for the final bosses of the game. After the cutscene with the dragon, immediately run over to the left side of the screen. Then jump over the final fireball he ends up firing towards you and equip the magic missile spell. Face him and then jump up and attack him with it. Once you've used it once, then you'll have to go back into the menu and select it again, and once again fire it at him. You'll have to do this a couple of times in order to take care of the dragon. After the cutscenes are over and we've saved the children now, continue off to the left and this is a good opportunity to heal up because it's time for the actual final boss of the game. Thankfully there are no enemies during these hallways so you can just walk on through and get to the next door.
It's now time to do battle with Verminard. Get up close to him and attack him and do your best to dodge his attacks, which is almost impossible. Just run back and forth from the left and right side of the screen delivering an attack or two, and when you've taken a lot of damage, be sure to use your Cure Light Wound spell to bring your health back up. If you don't have any of that but have some of your other characters, just be sure to switch out when your character gets low on health and switch to one of the other fighters. This battle really is just a lot of luck because it's almost impossible to dodge his attack. Since I'm running low on magic, I'll just switch off my character now and switch over to Gold Moon so you get to see her for the first time in the game. Just keep switching out your characters as needed, and eventually Verminard will go down. After an actual pretty satisfying ending, explaining a lot of stuff that went on and having some ending storyline, we then go to the end credits of the game. I have to admit that Dragons of the Flame is a MUCH better experience overall than Heroes of the Lance ever hoped to be. I find it really unfortunate that they didn't decide to actually release this one over in North America, but I guess they figured that since Heroes of the Lance didn't do so well and was considered so bad, that releasing this game would just automatically get it panned and it wouldn't sell very well. While they didn't make any direct sequels to this game using the same engine, there are sequels to the game that pick up exactly where we left off. There's a game available for the PC known as Shadow Sorcerer. That game picks up exactly where we left off here in Dragons of the Flame and it's based on the third and fourth Dragonlance campaign modules. The style of the game is extremely different, and it's for the DOS computer systems as well as the Amiga and Atari ST. I have to admit that I've actually never sat down and played that game, so I really don't have an actual opinion on it.
After the credits finish up, we have our The End screen, and that represents the end of Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, Dragons of the Flame. And with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.